So yesterday we did a pretty tough critique and took a look at some work that I don't think was quite up to snuff, that didn't quite come together and maybe needed some more work or a different approach. And we, we looked at why they didn't work specifically. And I thought I would do a, a positive opposite spin on that. So why don't we take a look at some work that did come together and, and did end up um, you know, really looking nice, I think, and look at the specific reasons why it did work. Um, this is a deer in a forest painting, and, and I love this painting. I think this is, this is the one that I like most probably of all any I've ever done. And for some reason, for me, it gives a, a feeling of you know, being it, it's autumn, kind of twilight, evening, the sun setting, and you're walking, maybe you're hiking or something, and you just, you see that buck or that deer or stag, whatever you want to call it, kind of wander out from the, from the dark trees. And it's just, it's just cool. I really like it. And I think the reason why it works so well is because it has a lot of depth. Um, the, the trees don't get lost. Uh, they make sense. There's this tunnel of light where we added a really nice bright focal point of the setting sun in the background. And we were able to get good layering of trees where they were light, just a bit darker than the sun. And then as they got forward and closer and closer to the foreground, they got darker and darker and darker. And the ability, you know, I lucked out on this one and it just worked where the trees got darker and darker. And they make sense to the eye. And it still kept that nice orange glow, that soft glow to give the evening autumn sense. You know, the, the trees are losing their, their, uh, their leaves. It's mostly just bare branches and there's some scattered little fan brush leaves that I think those subtle highlights uh, really help to add that foreground detail. A couple little branches that came together well uh, the leaf detail didn't get too confusing. It makes sense. And these little green touches of moss, it's nice to throw that green in there so it's not just reds and yellows and oranges. And I think the shading and the blending on the darkness uh, was really, really well done. Um, and the glow on the deer, it's back blending into that, that tunnel of light and the, the silhouetted outline of highlighting really, really uh, brings that light forward. And then the, the fireflies, I think, are, are a nice touch too and finished everything off. Without the fireflies, I don't think it would be as, as interesting and, and as successful. Um, but yeah, this, is, this, is, this was a really nice one. It's probably the one I'm, I'm, I'm most happy with ever. Uh, this was a tornado. Uh, one of you actually gave me this idea. I would never have thought of this. Uh, I forget who it was. I think I, I shouted them out though. But this, this tornado, it's simple. It's really simple. And I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to make it interesting enough. Especially if I just did, I wanted to show a real dark, strong, powerful tornado, but I, I wasn't sure whether to make it snake and give it a lot of twists or whether there would be too much movement and just too chaotic. So I went with just that single strong center point funnel and I thought it would be boring, but I don't think it is. It, for some reason, it's, it just really, I like looking at it and it, it gives me that power where I, I feel like I'm there. Um, I think a lot of the blues, all the different blues going from the white to the light blue to the dark blue, I think that balanced out well. And it's, it's a subtle, the blending's well done, and I think that the, the gradient of blue from light to dark was placed correctly. It's not too harsh, where it just goes to a straight line of light to dark. I think that, you know, these little... Um, these subtle little layers here of, of light blue really helped. I think the debris cloud flicking on the, the dark debris cloud where there's hundreds and thousands of little dots of sprayed paint using that trick 
really brought it to life down here at the bottom. The silhouetted foreground was a good touch because it doesn't pull attention away from this, the movement and the, the craziness of the, of the actual tornado, which is where I want everyone to look. And yeah, the blending is good. And then this light framing where I got that uh, light tan, that, that umber mixed with white and yellow and, and put that tan dust being sucked up and the way it frames that dark tunnel to really make it pop and give you that contrast, I think was the key. The debris cloud and this framing of that light uh, tan is, is the key here. So that's why it worked. And this one I wasn't so sure about. You know, I spoke yesterday on, on the negative critique painting uh, video about how sometimes after a couple days or weeks, a painting that I, when I finished, I thought I liked it will just turn sour and I can't even look at it anymore. This was the opposite, where when I first got done with it, I thought it, it didn't work. Um, I thought it was too washed out, but then over time, that became the reason why I like it so much. Uh, and I think it worked because, again, just like with the deer painting, we got the depth. These faint pine trees in the mist in the background are so faint that they just give a lot of distance and depth. These seem, you know, hundreds of yards away uh, versus these foreground pines. And it's really, I did a couple whitewashes at the end and I have some glazing videos showing you how to do that. I have a couple videos on this, uh, these misty pine forest paintings, which I think are always pretty powerful and, and nice. People seem to like them. Um, but yeah, the ability to have this background layer, which worked out, and then this mid layer, and then the foreground layer, but it's still soft and blended and shrouded and mist. I think I was able to luckily, I lucked out on this one, and, and on this particular one, I was able to get the mist and the gloom, and it just seems like a Washington forest or, or the Pacific Northwest, maybe Oregon, something like that. Now that some time has passed, I, I love this one too. It's so simple, but I think it, it works. It captured it. And this is, uh, these are a couple waves on a beach. And I think this works because of the movement. I was able to give a lot of movement up in the spray, again, with that flicking trick. And I think the shading underneath the lip, adding these uh, cooler blues, instead of just having pure white foam all throughout this wave, which would not look right, uh, was able to get some darker baby blues to show that shaded foam underneath the lip of the wave. And I think that was, uh, that's what made this one work. This was a quick cloud painting. I wanted to do a tutorial on, uh, I kind of lucked into a technique to make realistic clouds like this quickly. Again, I have a video on this, but we just put that, that cobalt blue background and left this, sketched out the cloud shape, added a cobalt blue background, and left the cloud completely void of any color at all. And just with a, with a filbert brush, while that cobalt blue was still drying, just blended it out, blended it out, and pulled that blue down into the cloud, but just randomly through blending as well as we could, it created all these bizarre erratic shapes and it just made it look like a lifelike cloud. It was a technique I'd never done before and just wanted to see if it would work and, and it did. And this was a recent leopard painting. And I'd always struggled with getting the right amount of, of water on the brush to get realistic grasses. So for a while, I couldn't quite figure out how watered down to get it, how much pressure to apply, how quick to move it. But we finally figured out how to get those grasses in the foreground. And I think that helped so much with this painting. 
also the fireflies, you know, that's always a nice touch. If you have a night evening scene, if you add some fireflies, it'll just, it breaks everything up and kind of blends everything together. So your eye has so many different interesting things to look at and it'll break up edges. You know, if you have a, a bad blend or something, you can put a firefly right over top of it and it'll break that edge up and it's just a nice touch. But I think that this one works because uh, the leopard proportions work. I think the body shape and, you know, the shoulders and the arms, I think everything's proportioned out well. And the highlights worked out. You know, these, the tops of these different body parts, the highlights really make them look 3D and, and realistic. I think the pattern looks looks good to the eye, and we did a couple glazes, a couple coats of glazing at the end, that really brought it uh, brought it to life. I think if I had, I wish I would have made this the from the top of the head down to the the muzzle and the nose. I wish I would have added more of a crest where it goes from muzzle to skull, like top of the head instead of just a straight line. But that's really the only thing that, that bugs me on this one. I, I think overall it's, it's a good painting and I like it. I think the stars uh, helped. But yeah. And this was a Moai statue from Easter Island. I've always seen pictures of these and, and I've wanted to paint them. And I tried one a few years ago that was somewhat successful, but I don't think it quite worked. But this time I, I think I pulled it off. And uh, I think these pink clouds, the blending, really the airbrushing and the blending is, is why this one works. In my opinion, where it goes from the pink to the light blue to the dark blues and blacks as it gets from that evening sunset up into the night sky that's, that's beginning all these little star clusters and some airbrushing on there. But the detail in the face, I think the proportions are good. Those clean, dark lines that make it look like the chiseled stone worked out. And altogether, you know, I've been going back to some of those old concepts that I didn't quite pull off and retrying them. Because over time, as you get a little better, you kind of retry some of those concepts that you weren't able to pull off a few years ago. I've been doing some of that lately, and so this one, yeah, this one came together. This was uh, a realistic wave that we did just a, just a few days ago. I think that was this weekend. Um, yeah, waves are hard, and I think this really, really worked out. Everything seemed to come together, and the reason why I think is this part right here. Kind of like the other wave painting, I think the key to this one was that division between the shaded foam. You see the different unique foam patterns within that uh, wave underneath the, the breaking crest to show shade, where that, that crest of the wave that's falling over, there's a defined line underneath it where the foam is shaded and the, the greens within that area are a bit darker than all the rest of the greens to show that shade. And then the sunlit foam out here, that contrast, I think is what makes this work and really gives it that 3D look. And then these highlights came together and worked out and were able to show that flow pretty well. And then the background worked out too, a nice little mist. We did a wet on wet blend here to get that fog to blend with the sea to give that uh, vague horizon line. And a couple little, there's good detail in the background to give the illusion of detail of, of some subtle waves in the background too. And then there was a, a red and, and brown mix that we put on top of the wave to frame it against the lighter wave highlights. And that shows some sand uh, through the water, just glowing through. I think that was a nice touch. The foam came together well. There's good shading in the foam versus the highlighting. There's good spray from the flicking. And uh, the foreground, well, it has good motion here in the foam to foreground. And then there's some subtle blues, but these little areas where the, the sand can be seen through this, this foam, I think, uh, brought that foreground together too. So everything worked out here uh, 
really, really happy with this wave. And this is a full hour tutorial narrated, show you every color mixed up, everything. Um, that can be found on, on the tutorials playlist or just under recent uploads. And this was, yeah, this was an orca that, it was kind of that iconic shot. You know, where that, that, that orca, that male orca with the big dorsal fin is just coming up and breathing and it exhales and there's spray and, and, uh, and uh, mist everywhere. And the airbrush really was the key to this painting. This was an airbrush heavy painting. And that's how I was able to get such subtle spray coming out from the exhale. But I think that glowing outline and that soft spray was the key to this. And the reflections, you know, the, the highlighting within the reflections and the foreground came together well. There's a lot of greens in here. Um, this was deceptively detailed down in here. It, if you glance at it, it looks just like it'd be one color and a simple thing. But this this took some time. This was, uh, I, I thought it was going to be a simple, a simple, clean little thing. And it ended up taking me a few hours, even on this little canvas. But down in the water, getting the reflections right from the fin reflecting and, you know, just little touches like some greens in, in the white of the marking near the orca's eye. You know, they have that oval marking. You can't just make it pure white or it won't look right. Blending in some green, just a subtle touch, little things like that. And getting your flicks right with the big spray to make sure it's not too dense in areas and making sure that the airbrushing came out just right. Um, th this one all came together and, and yeah, this is the last one. And I think I was on a kind of a firefly kick. So I just got the airbrush and, uh, had just finished the leopard and, and wanted to try it again. And I think it was successful here. I think the, the fireflies really brought this together and, and I, I've seen this concept before by other people uh, who nailed it. Uh, there's a lot of really good ones out there. I mean, there's a lot of good people out there, especially on YouTube. There's, there's some people that aren't even human, but um, yeah, this was just a firefly forest and my take on it. And I think we got the depth, you know, it's similar to the deer. Uh, we got the depth of the forest, the lighting's good. It went from, it goes from the bright to the distant trees that are just a lighter green. And then the mid-ground trees have some blues. And then you get up into the foreground where it's well silhouetted, but it also has some green showing through. And I think the fan brush work was, was pretty decent. The branches aren't, or the, the tree trunks aren't too overpowering. And the, the leaves, you can see a little bit of detail in the leaves, but not so much that it doesn't make sense. You know, it just seems like there's some light filtering through, lighting up this one area. You can see some leaf debris and leaf litter. And, uh, you know, the tree trunks get darker as they get out to the sides and it all came together. And then all the fireflies, it was tough to airbrush them, those distant ones, and keeping it small and, and tight, but, um, and getting them the sizing right as you move forward, making them bigger. But I think it all worked out and uh, this one grew on me too. I wasn't so sure in the beginning, but this one really grew on me. So those are some, some paintings that, you know, in a more positive light from yesterday that were pretty successful. And yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, those were two takes. One critiquing in a negative light on what could have been done better and, and how we could have changed some of those unsuccessful paintings. And then this is a new spin where we look at some, some of the ones that I, that I think are, are pretty decent work. Um, and YouTube seems to agree. Uh, so you guys are the final test. You know, I, sometimes I'm, I, I just, I've been looking at them so long that I don't even know if they're good by the time I'm done. And posting them on YouTube and, and putting them out there, um, it stings. When, when it's uh, apparent that they're not that good. But sometimes when they work, like these we just looked at, and people embrace them and, and connect with them and really like them, it's, it's the greatest feeling. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this helps. Um, 
on why some things work. And again, that, that one from yesterday, the negative critique, uh, those paintings are up for grabs. So if you want to watch that and comment on your favorite, then Monday we'll go ahead and, and uh, give one of them away. And I'll randomly pick someone from the comments. So if you're interested in that, uh, good luck on that. Thanks again. And I'll see you all soon on the next video.